Okay, we're back again, and this is part three of the relationship of walls to furnishings. And as I said in part two, we're going to be starting with the dining room. And we've still got a long ways to go, and I'm not sure where we're going to cut off at the next part, but uh, we're going to start with the dining room here. All right, the dining room. The atmosphere which is sought in decorating a dining room is one which will radiate an impression of good cheer. What we should seek to accomplish is not just an atmosphere of good cheer, but also to impart a sense of comfort, warmth, and relaxation. Now, I'll say again, these are general points for maybe, I hate to say it, but general people, average people, I don't know. I've done a lot of things that are totally different than what I'm saying because they were for specific people. So I do a lot of things that are contrary to what I'm saying here, but it's for a reason. It's because I'm dealing with people who are very confident, uh, intense people or business people or people who are dramatically different than most people are. So again, keep this in mind when I'm talking about these things because a lot of times I'll do something totally different for select individuals because they can handle it. They can deal with it. Okay. All right. If a color scheme selected using light colors tends to appear a bit somber and too dull, the atmosphere of the room can easily be given a cheerful note by the use of a small area of complementary color in pictures and vases and window draperies. Now again, complementary colors are those colors that are directly opposite that particular color on the color wheel. Now most of the time, complements have to be grayed or neutralized so they're not as intense okay so it's important that you understand that aspect because we can't always have large areas of intense color unless it's a very special situation or a unique situation okay continuing on after all the decoration of a dining room should produce a quiet rather low toned harmony as between the wall, ceiling, wood trim, furniture, and draperies. The central point of interest, the climax, in a dining room setting is composed of dishes and the table decorations. There should be nothing about the walls or draperies or furnishings of the room which are so bright and advancing that it competes for attention with the dishes, decorations, and food upon the table. Now, when I talked about the living room, I didn't give any specific colors, but I'll give you some examples of colors here as it applies to the dining room. So for specific suggestions, these colors might be considered Delft blue, old blue, dull grayed orange or russet, sage green, gray green, dark tans, leather brown, and dark French gray. But it's totally possible to go far beyond these color choices. The more adept you are, the more choices and colors that you will have at your disposal. So anyway, those are just some suggestions, okay? There can be a lot more. There can be wall covering, wallpaper, wall textures, suede on the walls, grass cloth, all kinds of different things to make a great backdrop for a dining room and for people to gather around and enjoy a wonderful meal. Kitchen colors. I mean, there's been a great reformation, resurgence, and other things in furnishing and decorating of kitchens. And a lot of that has to do with the advertising of kitchen uh, furniture, furnishings, utensils, equipment, things of that nature are largely responsible for this. And because there's a large amount of advertising, as pictured in magazines, that show how beautiful and inviting the atmosphere of a kitchen can be. And a lot of people like to have their kitchens appear, you know, bright, crisp, clean, as they really are. This appearance can be gained by handling of colors for the kitchen. In the first place, smooth walls are preferable to rough textures. Gloss or semi-gloss is preferred to a flat, lusterless surface. There's a practical reason back of this also. In a kitchen, there is a daily releasing of steam, laden with more or less grease from cooking. Also, there's bound to be more or less smoke. 
Accumulations of smoke and grease occur on the walls and ceiling. If the walls have a gloss or are smooth, they can be readily washed. Whereas rough walls accumulate dirt and hold it. Flat walls spot easily and cannot be washed, at least not more than once. And I don't mean flat walls that are flat, flat. I'm talking about flat finish on the walls. That is not uh, very good for repeated washings or for durability. Dark colors do not give the right appearance in a kitchen in most cases. The color should be light, bright, and cheerful, as well as maybe shiny, possibly, or reflective. We could say it that way. Somewhat of a duplication of the semi-gloss finishes evident in kitchen cabinets, stoves, and plumbing fixtures may well be continued on the walls and ceiling. This also gives more reflectivity of lighting as well. And what is needed to complete the balance in such color schemes is a note of bright color in a small area, like bright grade reds, blues, greens, oranges, or yellows can be introduced in some form or other. Uh, blues and greens are especially welcome in the kitchen because of their cool tones. All right, now we're going to touch on libraries and private offices. A lot of people like to work at home nowadays or at least have an office at home. And a lot of people enjoy having a library. And I love having a library. And I have a huge personal library myself. If there is any room in which the color treatment and furnishings should not call attention to themselves or clamor for notice, it is in a library, a study, or a private office in homes and business places. In such rooms, the occupants want agreeable surroundings, but they do not want active eye stimulations, which will divert them from the work at hand, whether it be study or the transaction of business. What is wanted is an atmosphere of comfort which is conducive to quiet and restfulness, as well as conducive to thinking and meditating. The color schemes for such rooms may be built up from medium dark grade colors and the less intense tones. Receding rather than advancing colors are desirable, and above all, simplicity in color combination as well as pattern, texture, and design are to be gained. Even the floor coverings, furniture, and window treatment should be subdued and should harmonize in low values rather than to contrast greatly in value. So you can have even art objects and accessories that could be in, you know, bronze or something like that. They kind of give a stately, studious appearance to things. Now, just to say something a little more out of the ordinary, though it's really not, you could have a library that was upholstered or covered in leather that would give a very rich environmental context to be in and of course it's been used in, in walls um, in times past you know a n number of uh, years ago in fact hundreds of years ago so anyway that's just a little out of the average vein treatment for walls for a library and obviously not everyone would be able to afford that cost to have that done but there it is so continuing on, uh, such color schemes as we've mentioned, they're likely to become a bit somber and need a note of contrast in color. This can be supplied by a central point of interest or climax, which is in the form of a not too large, brightly colored picture or vase containing flowers in well-selected colors. If there are any decorative designs on the wall, such as a frieze or a stencil band, it can be in simple classic designs and self-toned or colors related to the wall color. All right, now we go to bedroom colors. The atmosphere to be created by color schemes for sleeping rooms or bedrooms should be one of restfulness and relaxation. Light colors are much to be preferred to dark shades. Generally speaking, the color should be warm unless the room happens to be of the low ceiling type on the south side of a home, which actually becomes very warm during the summer. In this case, you can ease that feeling of warmth with cool blue grays with a bit of contrasting orange or gold, cool bluish greens and greenish grays with pale lavender and black are useful in such rooms as well. For other bedrooms, light grays which have yellow or red in their makeup for warmth can be used as well as ivory with light olive green or other greens. Dull blue 
and gold are good color combinations, as are also delicate blues, creams, and light grays. But even if the vivid hues are out of keeping, equally so are the sad and somber colors. Clear common sense again warns us against the depressing melancholy tones, against blues of too great weight, against the solemn purples, which have been called the ashes of color, against certain dark reds, which may be described of as sullen. Now again, let me clarify a few things here. I've used purple in bedrooms. I've used purple in my own bedroom. And so it depends a lot on the person, what they can handle and what they can handle, what their preferences for color is, what their appreciation for color is. Sometimes what they know about color is symbolism of color. And so even if you do a bedroom in purple, then you want to have it done with a at least a semi-gloss sheen to it. So that is reflective of light. And then the paint actually looks like it has some actual depth to it. Okay, otherwise it can get a little somber or sullen or depressing. So yes, so again, it's all how you handle this. So we've been talking a lot about color here, but also realize that the finish of it, like eggshell, matte, semi-gloss, gloss, you know, whatever, has a large impact on color as well. So, you know, look at something that's dull black versus glossy enamel black. You know, even think of a car, you know, let's say, a, let's say a flat black Model T versus a wonderful, radiant, deep, dark black that's got just such a luster and a sheen on it. You can see your image in it on a Rolls Royce. OK, you get the difference between there. It's it's that's another aspect about color is what kind of finish is it in. So very critical there. And would apply to bedrooms equally as well and very important. So carrying on then, we could use for the bedroom various shades of yellow, soft greens, soft blues and grays, and the possibilities for working out variations upon these colors, as well as for combining them into color chords, so to speak. You know, like in music, you got a note, then you've got uh, two notes hit together, three notes, which usually is a chord there, four notes, five notes played simultaneously. Okay, so the combinations and the varieties are infinite. So another thing that's been said is that no color is more suited to the bedroom than gray. Now we're not talking about battleship gray here. Okay, this has been called, gray has been called the peacemaker of colors. In other words, nature as we know it uses gray and gray browns and uses them lavishly and and is a great foil for particular beauties and flowers and things like this. We look at it and notice it in the coloring of the ground, of rocks, of different types of vegetation. You know, gray is a versatile color, but almost a treacherous one in certain states. I don't mean in certain states of the United States, in certain conditions and states. In that of a steely tone, for instance, where it is a mean or the middle between black and white, it is far from friendly. It's rather suggestive of medieval prisons and of stern limitations. On the other hand, when warmed with an admixture of yellow or a small amount of red, gray will prove essentially fit for the restful room or for the bedroom. So in other words, it's got a tint or a tone of another color that warms it up. So remember, that's one of the things that we do with colors when we try to neutralize them is that we're neutralizing them or actually graying them down or adding the complement, which if you add enough of the complement, and let's just say, you know, 50%, though this does vary depending on the color and the intensity that you're mixing together as far as opposites are concerned is that when you add enough of each color it gets down to a certain gray that's the total neutralized aspect of color so as sheer gray suggests limitation 
Blue, even in its heavy form, suggests the illimitable. In its lightest tones, a characteristic of the limitless sky, blue possesses the rare quality of allurement. All right, we're going to end part three right here. And in part four, we're going to take up color schemes for the hall and continue on with other elements and areas as well.